to the first episode of Saturday Night Horror for 2021. It's a new year and I'm looking forward to uh, what this year brings for Saturday Night Horror. So we're going to start the year off with a battle of the titans. A clash of the champions. Icon versus Icon. Horror franchise versus horror franchise. Tonight we're going to be watching Alien vs Predator. Now, Alien vs. Predator, believe it or not, is, before the movie came out, is something we had seen in virtually every other kind of media. We saw everywhere but a movie. <laughs> there were comic books, video games, all kinds of stuff. So, Alien vs. Predator. Well, we never actually saw it on the big screen until 2004 when this movie came out. Now, Aliens and Predators, uh, as far as interacting with each other, was hinted at way back in 1990 towards the end of Predator 2. Now there's a scene where Danny Glover's character, and I can't remember his name, is on the Predator ship and he's looking at all the trophies that the Predators have. Uh, skulls of the th creatures and things they've killed, weapons, armor. And up on the wall with their trophies is the skull of one of the aliens. And that, I mean, when I saw it I was like, oh crap. So you're telling me the Predators and the aliens exist in the same kind of universe there? So that was a pretty cool little uh, teaser, little Easter egg. We wouldn't see them interact with each other on the big screen until 14 years later. So from 1990 you get a teaser, 14 years later, 2004. Good lord, has it been 16 years already? Jesus. 2004 you finally get Alien vs Predator on the big screen. Now this movie, when it first was announced, I really wanted to go see it, man. I was excited about it. I did not go to the movie to see it, but I did buy it the day it came out. I remember the day it came out because I was working at Eckerd at the time, right down the road here. Eckerd Drug Store, which apparently no longer exists. And we always used to get the new DVDs in a day early. So they, we, they would release every Tuesday. We'd get them in Monday afternoon and we'd have to kind of hold on to them. So Monday afternoon, they come in, and I'm just looking at them like, man, tomorrow you're mine. <laughs> so yeah, when, uh, that next morning, Tuesday, I bought it, took it home, watched it, and uh, yeah. <laughs> but definitely uh, looking forward to watching it tonight. It's been quite a few years since I've watched Alien vs. Predator, so I don't remember too much about it. So it's definitely going to be a fun night watching that. Also, for the kitchen part of tonight's episode, I'm going to be making... A Nilla wafer banana pudding, which I absolutely love. And then we're going to be making for our main meal. It's called eggs in a basket. If you've never heard of eggs in a basket, it's real simple. It's eggs, bread, butter. You can't go, you can't screw it up. It's impossible. So there you have it, folks. Tonight's movie, Alien vs. Predator. In the kitchen, vanilla wafer banana pudding and eggs in a basket. So without further ado, let's go in the kitchen, let's get the food started so we can go out front and watch our movie. I'll meet you in the kitchen. Let's go out to the kitchen, let's go out to the kitchen, let's go out to the kitchen and have ourselves a snack. Alright everyone, we're going to start with our vanilla wafer, banana pudding, and these are our ingredients. We have six eggs. We have sugar. Let me open it up there. Yes, sugar. <laughs> we have vanilla extract, of course. Pinch of salt, our bananas, vanilla wafers, milk, and we're also going to need flour. So there you have it. Those are our ingredients. Let's go ahead and get this pudding started. Alright, so I got our flour in here. This is a makeshift double broiler, which I never knew what it was until right now. So basically, the bottom pot is filled with boiling water. Alright, we got our flour in there. Now we're going to add our next ingredient, which is our sugar. And yeah, that bottom pot, boiling water, and we cook everything up top. Alright, <clears throat> excuse me, we have just a pinch of salt, just a little bit of salt to add to that. And this thing is so weird, man. And uh, basically all we're going to do is we're going to stir this all up. And I, I'm, I'm still, this double broiler thing is just so weird to me. <laughs> but it works. So now that we've got our flour, our salt, and sugar mixed up, we're going to start adding some other stuff to it. 
So we'll mix it up a little bit more here and make sure it's all nice and uniform, I guess you would say. All right, there we go, ready for the next ingredient. All right, next up we have our milk. There we go. Oh yeah. All right, now that we've got our milk in there, time for our eggs and it's just the egg yolks not the egg whites just the egg yolks so we're gonna put the egg yolks in there look at that it's coming together folks all right we've got our egg yolks in there now we're just kind of break the yolks here and we're just gonna stir this around and we're gonna stir this around until it gets nice and thick so it'll be a little while before it gets done obviously I'm not going to film the entire thing because I don't know how long it's going to take but we're just going to stir this up until this turns into a pudding slash custard like mixture nice and thick so hopefully it won't take too long alright it's starting to get thick not done yet needs to go a little bit longer but uh, definitely making progress As you can see the yolks have uh, disappeared so that's good alright so we are just about done it's nice and thick pudding like texture uh, I think we're gonna call it wrap alright so it is done so now that we have our pudding mixture there we're gonna add our vanilla and I was an idiot when I was younger the vanilla extract smelled so good so I wanted to taste it and I actually uh, took a teaspoon of vanilla extract and tried to drink it. Don't do that, folks. <laughs> uh, free advice, do not drink vanilla extract. It does not taste how it smells. So anyway, we're going to mix this all together, and that'll be it for our pudding. So, a little bit longer, this part will be done. All right, now that we've got our pudding mixture done, we have to slice up these bananas, and we're going to use five bananas. And obviously, I'm not going to film slicing every single one, and my arm is in the way. I apologize. But it's kind of tricky to do this when you have a tripod set up in front of it. So we're going to slice all these bananas up, just like this first one here. And we'll be back when they're all done. shouldn't take too long at all. All right, all the bananas are sliced up. Good Lord, that is a lot of bananas. Uh, probably used too many, but we'll see. So now we have to layer the pudding before we put it in the oven. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we put pudding at the bottom of our uh, casserole dish here, or our pot. So that's good. And then we're just going to put uh, Nilla wafers on the top of this. So we're going to have pudding, Nilla wafer, banana, and then repeat until we're all out of pudding so it shouldn't take too long we're just layering everything up now I love Nilla wafers by themselves but man this this pudding is awesome we have a barbecue place called McCall's here and this is my favorite thing from McCall's it, if I could just go there and eat the pudding I'm all for it <laughs> alright everyone so we had kinda sorta got all the Nilla wafers up there for that layer looks good alright and we got all the bananas up there as well and basically all we're gonna do is repeat that process we're gonna put some pudding on top of this the vanilla wafers the bananas and go until we're all out of pudding and of course it wouldn't be a box of vanilla wafers if it didn't have the penis head wafer in there somewhere so there you go alright the pudding is done it's layered and we're going to put it in the oven that looks awesome man that looks awesome looks so good then we got another wafer over here that looks like Pac-Man looks like Pac-Man who knows he's about to be eaten <laughs> so we're gonna stick this in the oven let it cook and that'll be that okay so while that's cooking I had a ton of extra banana slices as you can see so I'm gonna make smoothies out of them now usually when I make smoothies I have a smoothie uh, powder that I put in there I don't have any now so I'm just gonna add bananas milk and ice 
and hope for the best. <laughs> so, don't know how this is going to turn out, but I don't want to just toss those bananas in the trash and waste them like that. So, we're just going to put our bananas in the blender here. I think we almost got them. Almost. There we go. All right. Okay, now that we got our bananas in there, next we're going to add our milk. Um, about a cup of milk. All right, like so. And all that's left to do is add the ice. All right, we got our milk, our bananas. We've got actually two cups of ice here. And we're just going to blend this up and hope for the best. All right, got the lid on. Let's get it started. Now, hopefully, this uh, turns out to be good. Like I said, usually when we do smoothies, we buy a, a pack of smoothie mix to add to it, but we don't have the mix, so who knows. Alright, so it looks weird. Um, I'm not very hopeful. Alright, so we've got the smoothie in our glass here, and what I do when I make a smoothie is I actually put it in the freezer for about an hour. I let it freeze for about an hour, then I take it out. So we'll let these freeze for an hour. Uh, we made two and a quarter cups worth. And now my least favorite part of cooking, I have to do dishes. Um, yeah, so, yeah, not looking forward to that at all. Alright, everyone. Now that the pudding is done, we are going to make our main course. We are going to make eggs in a basket. And this is it. This is all you need. Butter bread and eggs. We've already got our pan heating up so let's go ahead and get this bread ready. Alright so we have our bread right here. Basically what you'd want to do is just butter your bread. That's it. And we'll butter one side of bread and you can use extra butter up here. Uh, it's probably best to use extra butter up here because we're going to have to put this in a pan kind of like a grilled cheese sandwich. So I'll be back when I'm finished breading or buttering the bread. Good lord, it's a tongue twister. All right, the bread is buttered, and now we're going to have to punch a hole in all of it. Now this loaf of bread has been squished down, so this might be too big. Uh, we'll see how this turns out. Uh, what we do is just get anything with a circular, flat surface like this. Squish it down, and yeah, that's too big. That's gonna all right. We're gonna need something smaller, and then we just cut along here and get our hole out. So yeah, I'm gonna have to get something smaller to cut the hole because that's way too big. So I'll get something smaller. I'll finish up the rest of the slices, and we'll be back. But yeah, that's what you want to do. You want to do that to all for uh, every piece of bread, and you want to save that middle part that you cut out. Don't do not throw that away. Alright, we're done. I found something smaller to cut our holes with. Like I said, this loaf of bread has, for some reason, been squished down, so whatever. And we saved our cutouts here. And we'll need those later. So now that we've got this, we're ready to actually start cooking everything. Alright, our pan has been heating up this entire time, so the first thing we're going to do is put some butter in there. And this is a big pan, so we're going to use more butter than usual, just just so the entire pan gets coated in butter. And since it's been heating up this entire time, as you can see, it will not take long to melt this butter at all. So once we get this butter done, like so, we're going to put our bread in, and we're going to put the unbuttered side down into the butter in the pan. God, so I should have just redid that. I should have just got another piece for that one, but I don't want to waste it. Alright, so the unbuttered side is going down into the pan, and that butter's going to cook it like a grilled cheese sandwich. And I, I think uh, most of you can figure out what we're going to do. So after we have that in there, we're going to crack an egg, and we're going to put an egg into each one of these holes in the middle of the bread. 
All right, we'll be back in just a minute. All right, we have our eggs in the middle of our bread, and we're just going to let these cook for a while. As you can see, the butter is melting on this side, which means that unbuttered side we put down is starting to cook. It usually doesn't take too long, but I wait. A, I give it a little extra time just because it's tricky to flip over with the eggs not being cooked all the way either. Alright, so as you can see, the eggs are starting to cook. Uh, they cooked enough so we can probably flip them. Uh, let, let's check this out. Let's see how this goes. Alright, we'll, we'll have to try this again. Alright, let's try that again. <laughs> And we'll flip this first one over, and as you can see, that side is starting to cook. And I'll keep flipping them over back and forth until they're cooked to my liking. But that's pretty much all there is to it for eggs in a basket. We're just uh, going to keep flipping these over until they're cooked the way we want them to be. Um, maybe that's good enough for you. Maybe you want to cook it longer. Uh, personal preference. okay so these have been cooking quite a while we took those out and we are going to cook our cutouts now our center piece of bread that we cut out earlier those four pieces so we're going to put a little bit of butter in here just enough to get those pieces cooked and we're going to melt it this pan is hot when I rinse this off with the cold water it's going to start sizzling so we'll just get the butter melted like so that did not take long at all and the four, uh, four circles that we cut out we're going to do the same thing we did with the big pieces of bread. Unbuttered side down in the pan. And hopefully I don't burn myself on this sizzling hot butter. And these pieces do shrink down once you cook them, so they're not going to be as big or as thick as they are now. They'll, they'll be uh, thinner and smaller. All right, and we'll be back once these are done cooking. The meal will be done. And here we go. Those are our eggs in a basket, our four pieces there, and our center pieces look like sausage, but they're not. <laughs> it's just really cooked. And that is it. Now these cook long enough so the yolk is not runny. Um, that's how I like my eggs in a basket. You can have runny yolk if you want to. Totally a personal preference. So now that we have our meal, we have to get something to drink. Chocolate, will, bleh, chocolate milk would be good with that, but it's Saturday Night Horror. So you know what that means. We're going in the garage. I still have not uh, super glued the refrigerator handle back on. I got to do that this weekend. All right, here we go. Nectar of the gods. We have our ice cold. You know what? We forgot the mandatory Jurassic Park poster shot. We almost forgot. Yeah. Had to get that in there. So we got our Coke. We got our meal. So there we go. Eggs in a basket and an ice cold, delicious, refreshing, and crisp Coca Cola. Let's go out front. Alright, so we're out front here getting ready to start our movie, and I don't know if you can notice, but that is Bella on the TV stand in front of the TV. So that is little baby Bella. Uh, she likes to go up there and attack the people on the TV sometimes, so we're going to see if she's battling the aliens. And unfortunately, the Christmas tree is gone for the year. I, I'm always sad when we take it down because I absolutely love Christmas. I absolutely love the decorations and having the tree up, so kind of sad that it's gone. But we're here with our food, our movie. Bella apparently is going to help us fight the aliens and predators. All the lights in the house are now off. Let's get it started. Alright, so Bella's not in my lap. She's at the end of the... Uh, recliner here and she's enjoying the movie I think she doesn't lay in people's laps as much as she used to she's a big girl now she's growing out of that phase all right the movie is over and uh, it was it had its moments it was I don't know I'm kind of 50 50 on it 
There are some parts I enjoyed, some parts I did not. Now before we get started, um, I can't remember if I recorded it or not, but I had leftover bananas from the uh, banana pudding. And I should have checked to see if I recorded it before I start talking here, but I didn't. I took the extra bananas and made some banana smoothies, and those smoothies were absolutely disgusting. They went right down the drain. But the banana pudding itself was awesome. The eggs in a the basket were good, they always are, so it was good eating. Now as far as the movie goes, uh, like I said, it had its moments. Some parts I enjoyed, some parts I didn't. It did kind of have a throwback to the past. Uh, you remember the old alien movies? We had the Whalen yutani Corporation. This movie at the beginning, we had the Whalen Corporation. So, uh, no Utani yet. So, kind of, kind of a neat throwback there. Uh, man, this movie. I don't know. It, I felt like it had too much human interaction with it to feature the humans too much. And I really didn't care for any of them, which is kind of the, it's the normal for me in a horror movie. The only person in the cast I was really rooting for was one of the Predators. Um, the humans, I could not care less about. I didn't care if they lived or died. They were just there. They were just, you know, meat shields. <laughs> Did not care about them. And as I said, I thought it focused too much on the humans. But the story that they went for in this movie there has to be humans involved otherwise we wouldn't have the alien versus predator and I don't want to get into it because I don't want to spoil anything for just in case there's someone who hasn't watched it but in order to have the predators fighting the aliens there needs to be humans involved I just think that they, they spent too they put too much focus on the humans I'm here to see the aliens fighting the predators I don't want to see humans walking around and it, it's just uh yeah they were need, uh, I'll spoil this much, the humans were needed to breed the aliens because as you all know the face suckers have to you know, go down in their throat and aliens have to burst out of their stomachs so that's why the humans were needed but then were, uh, they stuck around, they had some humans that were not harvested that stuck around and it focused I think way entirely too much on them we even had one of the humans and oh my god a history about the predators, if you've seen the other predator movies uh, the predators respect a creature that can hunt and kill and they kind of use that in this movie. We have one of the humans who accidentally kills one of the aliens in front of a predator. So of course that means the predator sees them as a fellow warrior. And this is where it gets lame folks. The alien crafts this human some armor made out of the body of the alien. She's got the alien's head on her arm as a shield. She's got the alien's tail as a spear, and in the lamest scene of the movie, we see our human hero and the predator running side by side with their weapons off to kill the aliens. It's absolutely ridiculous, and I hated that. Don't the, no human is equal to a predator. I, I don't care if they respect you as a hunter or not. It was just stupid. They made it seem like this human was on par with a killing machine that is the predator, and I thought it was absolutely stupid. Um, oh my God, I, I just—it was an incredibly lame scene. And I just—I'm not a fan of humans teaming up with predators because if you accidentally killed a creature. Now you're a, a superior hunter in the eyes of the predator. It's ridiculous. And this chick was scared out of her mind the entire movie. But as soon as the predator gives her a weapon, oh my gosh, she's supposed to be some kind of badass warrior. No, <laughs> no, at all. Um, it was—it was just. It took an hour into the movie to actually see the aliens and the predators go at it. We had a little teaser at the beginning of the movie, which I don't even count. But for the first hour, it's all about humans. Um, they discover this huge pyramid 2,000 feet under the ice in Antarctica. So we spend an hour, you know, talking about how they found the pyramid. Then they're in the pyramid exploring, and we finally, after an hour in the movie of nothing but humans and, you know, we're gonna make history and all this bickery. We finally get the showdown that everyone wanted to see. Unfortunately, it uh, the human element lasted longer than the aliens and predators, which was a shame. We had the aliens killing the humans. We had a few predators and aliens die, but I don't know, man. It's I feel like the, the movie is Alien versus Predator, not Alien versus Predator, but starring humans walking around 
being humans. It was ridiculous. I, I, I just I understand why they had to have the humans in there, but they, they focused too much on them. And they did kind of correct that with the second Alien vs. Predator, but I think it was too little too late by then. But yeah, this pyramid that they find under the ice, it's uh, during the movie you find out what it actually f serves as, why it was built, why it's there, and I don't know, man, I, I just, when we actually had the Predators battling the aliens, I thought it was awesome, until we got the humans involved. Of course, we had to throw a human in there fighting alongside a Predator, and you're looking at them like, you got this alien creature over here. This predator over here, what makes us, how am I supposed to believe that a human is supposed to stand up side by side with a predator and fight? It, it, it was just absolutely ridiculous. Um, I don't know. But like I said, the scenes where we actually had the alien fighting the predator were awesome. Not so much for the humans. And that's really all I, all I can say about it. Um, that's, that's really it. I, I really don't have anything else to say. It's I'm kind of torn on this movie. I don't. I didn't fully enjoy it. I enjoyed some parts uh, towards the end when they actually gave us what we paid to see. But yeah, I think they just spent, like I said, a hundred times already. I think they spent way too much time focusing on all the humans in the movie, and it just kind of took away from it. Like, I didn't pay to see this. I want to see the creatures going at it. But anyway, Alien vs. Predator. I mean, if you want to see two horror icons go at it for about half an hour. Maybe 40 minutes. Yeah, uh, definitely watch it. Um, other than that, I can't really, no, overwhelmingly recommend it. I mean, it is what it is, man. It has its moments, but it's uh, it's not one that I'll watch every year. Like I said, it's been a few years since I've watched it, and it'll probably be a few more if I ever watch it again. So, with that being said, I think we're going to wrap it up for this episode of Saturday Night Horror. I said not too much to say about the movie it's uh, a lot of hype and really didn't deliver like it could have but what do I know I, I'm, I'm just sitting in my living room watching the movie I, I had nothing to do with the making of it so anyway everyone I hope you enjoyed today's episode um, I definitely enjoyed the cooking part the movie there yeah. that being said we'll wrap it up hope you guys have an awesome weekend have an awesome rest of your week and I will see you next time on the next episode of Saturday Night Horror. Y'all take care.